Father in heaven, we are grateful, Lord, for uh, Mentone, Seventh-day Adventist Church. They could undeceive the world. Adventist World Radio, the Seventh-day Adventist, Lord, the General Conference, Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, that we can see our children on the stage sing your three angels' messages, Lord. Sing and praise God for the parents that are teaching them and Marlene to lead them and the pastors and Rodney and John. And we thank you so much for uh, Dwayne McKee, Lord, and Kyle and all the team that's going all over this world. We thank you, Lord, for giving us such a high honor and privilege to speak in your house of prayer. We pray that your presence may be here, Lord. Leave us not alone. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, Kyle gave us this privilege that God worked through him to give us this privilege. And I was also uh, going to different churches and actually see how the churches are revived. Lots of times we don't even ask for donations and people pour in donations because they see God is working through the airways. And people want to go home. We want to go home and start living. But actually heaven starts now. And when Jesus is in our hearts, we are undeceived because we keep our eyes on the King of kings, the only one that never sinned. Let us turn to our text, Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Jeremiah verse 17, verse 9, if I can find it. And we'll read that again. Ready? This is what it says. It says that our hearts are deceitful. Do you believe that? Our hearts are deceitful. We are quick to judge everyone else. We look at someone else, oh, they're wrong. I'm good. You're wrong. Our hearts are deceitful. We marry someone, we tell them we love them, and in a couple years, we're divorced. Our hearts are deceitful. We think we're saved in the church, and we live a life of sin, and we're hypocrites, and we're worse than the world. Our hearts are deceitful. It says our hearts are deceitful above all things. That's pretty deceitful. Above all things? Think about that. Above all things. And desperately wicked. I knew I was desperately wicked. I didn't know how to change it until I focused my eyes on Jesus Christ, the man who never sinned, the man who reveals our hearts to ourselves. Isn't he a great man? In the flesh, Jesus didn't come to show us what a God could do, not even an angel, but he showed us what's possible through a human being in the flesh. So we have a chance. Isn't that good news? He overcame sin in the flesh. It says, our hearts are desperately wicked, and who can know it? Unless we look at Jesus, we'll remain deceived. And then in verse 10, it says, I, the Lord... I, the Lord, search the heart. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins and give and even give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. You reap what you sow. Verse 11. <clears throat> As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatched them not, so he that get it riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and his end shall be as a fool. 
deception. I want to tell you about I was a deceiver, theft by deception. Deceived many people for myself so I can get advantage, but it was gained that is loss. Hardens the heart. I want to tell you about my cousin, Marcos, and his wife, Kathy. Kathy was a, Marco was an alcoholic, a party man, so was I. We'd drink together. He'd put me under the table. I'd get sick for three days. He'd party three more. And then I tried, <clears throat> I seen myself as I was. I wasn't going anywhere. But sickness, pain, suffering, and I went, I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, what's life all about? If you're real, show me. Show me if you're real. And if I have to go without shoes, without a car, without anything on this earth, because I thought the honest man will have nothing, only the, the ones that are sharp and can run over people, they have it, they're rich. That was my philosophy, that was what I was raised to believe. Deception. Someone else is preaching too. <laughs> So I was deceived. My heart was deceitful above all things. So was Marcos' heart deceitful. So was his wife's heart deceitful. So Marcos was in the psychic. His wife was in psychic business. Palm reading, psychic business. He met, uh, she met someone, a banker, that was, he probably deceived people as well, that he got so rich. She was able to con this banker out of $25 million. This is what they said, I cannot be a liar. But anyway, I know they had millions. About uh, not too long ago, Kathy, his wife, called me and said, they knew I was a Christian, they knew I was what I was doing for 30 years. I invited them. Uh, many times to have Bible studies, they, his wife wanted to, my cousin wanted to, but he didn't want me around because he would, I would destroy his business. He wouldn't, he couldn't, he had to work. If he became a Christian, he figures he had to work. This way he doesn't have to work. He can just have a party and get all the money he wants and party and have a good time and get all the gusto he can out of life. Deception. Deception. So they conned this man out of 25 or whatever it was, millions of dollars. And just before, about a month or two before, my, sister, my uh, cousin Kathy called me to their house, said, come on over, I want to see you. And uh, we'll reminisce, show you some old pictures of your grandfather and the family in the old days. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll be looking forward to it. But she said, don't come now because I'm sick. So I said, okay, <clears throat> I'll wait. But apparently I waited too long. Both of them died within 30 days apart. So what happened to their riches that they got ill gained? What's happening to our riches on this earth? We are killing each other for riches. We're bombing each other for riches. What kind of riches? Riches that are full of cancer? This earth is doomed. It's temporary. What are we sacrificing eternal life for? Pleasure? Things? Pride? A suit? Good food? Lots of shrimps and unclean foods? Deception? Where is your treasure? What does Jesus say? What does Jesus say in Matthew 6, 21? What's he say? About treasure, what's it say? Wherever your, your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. It could be in a little thing, in a little thing. There was this evangelistic uh, series going on a long time ago in Florida. And this uh, 
one man that loved seafood. He was coming to the meetings every night. His heart was touched until it came to the health message. This man loved shrimp, seafood, all kinds of seafood, unclean seafood as well as clean. And every night they'd have an appeal, a calling. Come up, give your heart to the Lord. And this man would want to get up, but he doesn't get up. He doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't want to get up because he is cherishing something. He doesn't want to give it up. He knew he had to give it up. If he, if, he, if he walks up, he had to give it up. So he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. They kept calling. He kept calling. He's keeping himself in the seat. The Holy Spirit kept calling him. One day, he had enough of it. And he says, all right, all right. I'll give up shrimp. <laughs> so it could be a little thing. It doesn't have to be a gigantic thing. It can't be, you know, riches or what. It could be a cigarette. It could be something you know is wrong that's hurting you and you don't want to give it up. It doesn't have to be a gigantic thing. But our hearts are deceitful. He gave up the shrimps and accepted the Lord. Now we'll have eternal life. So that's why it's important for us to realize who we are. We are deceitful and there's only one that's righteous and honest. And he restored honesty and justice to the earth because the earth is guilty all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God Romans 6 23 all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God Jesus knew, knows that he knew that he had to bring justice back to the earth I will pay he has brought his precious blood And shed his precious blood for Kyle on that cross. He shed his precious blood for Rodney. Put your name there for John, for Miller Mendes, for every one of us. You're justified. He justified us. But we don't remain unjust that's the good news the good news we are deceived in all kinds of ways the three angels message going around the world undeceived undeceives all around the world that's why it's important God has called this church to witness for him this is why it's important for us to to understand what God is telling us. Where was the first great uh, deception? Go to Genesis chapter 3, and we'll see where it started. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent, chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God made. And he said unto the woman, the first woman, and he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden? He's asking her a question. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, You shall not eat of it, eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God knoweth that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. We have been deceived, and we have been worshiping ourselves ever since. We have put ourselves up on the throne. Self-worship, that's where Satan started. And then you go into this woman. Turn with me in Revelation 17. Deception. Revelation 17. 
starting at verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels who had the seven vials to talk with me, saying unto me, Come unto uh, here, and I'll show you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth on many waters, whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. What does wine represent in the Bible? The teachings or the doctrines of men. Over and over and over again, all over this world, there's 45,000 different denominations. I don't know how accurate that is, but that's what I googled. And they all tell them, they tell us or everyone else, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says you're not to keep God's law anymore. Because it was done away at the cross. That's the Old Testament. You heard that, right? You can't keep the commandments of God. No one can keep the commandments of God. Nobody is perfect. Nobody can be like Jesus. Is that true? Deception. 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 Sin is a choice, my friends. Nobody forces you to commit adultery, to cheat, lie, steal, hateful. Nobody does that, and God will provide a way. We live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. What the word of God say? Are you studying your Bible? Are you studying what Jesus says? Are, we, are you studying what Jesus stands for? He says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, with every temptation, God will do What? What every temptation, God will make a way. God will make a way for us to resist that temptation. How do you do that? Righteousness by faith. Temptation is a test of your faith. When you are tempted, you are tested. Do you believe and trust that you can overcome? Do you believe I can give you the strength to overcome that temptation? Do you believe that you are yourself your worst enemy? Praise God, praise God that Jesus Christ, the one and only man that came to save us because he placed a value upon us that no value could compare on planet earth. If you gained the whole world, you could not pay what Jesus paid, the penalty for our sins. When you go and give a book to someone, you are giving them an invitation. You are giving them the greatest gift that this world has ever known. And people are deceived. I went to some houses <clears throat> in my time here, and I've gave some books to some people, and I'm telling them, listen, the world is being deceived. Ourselves are deceived. Listen to the man who never sinned. He'll lead us into the right place. He'll give us purpose for living. He'll give us joy. There's joy in keeping the commandments of God greater than any pleasure or any sin or any pride or anything this world has to offer Nothing can compare to the love and power of Jesus Christ. Can we praise his holy name? My friends, AWR Radio is broadcasting these three angels' messages all over this world. And people are being undeceived. The greatest message that they're receiving is that the Ten Commandments have not been done away with. And we have people, in, especially in the Philippines and different countries all over this world that are receiving the message and are becoming powerful evangelists, witnesses for the Lord God. Can you say amen, my friends? AWR Radio is broadcasting for the church. It works with the uh, General Conference, and it works with you everywhere we go. People are amazed. People are happy. People are being revived because we're working together. Not only our witness, but the voice of God is witnessing to this world. Can we say amen, my brothers and sisters? is very, very, very important for us to understand. Let us turn to uh, 2 Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. If I can find it, I lost it. We need to study the Bible every day. Are we studying the Bible every day? 
Are we spending at least an hour with the king of the universe? If we're not, we are being deceived. If you don't see treasure in God's word, this is the true treasure. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. We have a new pastor there where I'm, well, we just joined in Greenville, Tennessee. His name is Ken Crutcher. He's a very simple man, but when he speaks the word of God, power comes out. Power. He was, he was reading scriptures for us, and he just got a new Bible. He said he spent $18 for it. Now, that Bible had this gold here. This used to have gold. It's gone. It was gold, and, the, and he was reading from the word of God, and the lights were flickering, that gold. I said, Wow! The golden word, look at that. It's reflecting the golden word. And he told us it's a simple story. And it touched so many hearts. And we was having a communion service. And he tells us, he asked us the question, Did any, does any of you wash the feet of Jesus? He said, well, the only one I remember washing the feet of Jesus is Mary Magdalene. And then he washed the feet of the of the disciples. You remember the story? Every time you have a communion service. And the saint said something simple that just changed my heart. He said, do you know that the Lord says if you give a cup of cold water to one of my followers, you're giving it to me? And if you go and visit one of his followers in prison, you're visiting him? Remember that story? When we wash each other's feet, we're not just washing each other's feet, but we're washing the feet of the king in you. Isn't that amazing? I just learned that. That was amazing. And I shared that with a member there at the church. You remember Todd? In, in uh, Green, uh, Rouge Green? Remember Todd was always not saying anything. Remember him? Never said a word. Bible studies, Sabbath school lesson. Todd never said, but Rouge would say a lot of things. She's still that way, you know. And then... <laughs> They would always go to the uh, couples, wash each other's feet. Because he didn't want to do it. You know, he didn't, that's humiliating, washing man's feet. And then Ruja told me, go get Todd. What? Go get Todd. Hurry up. So I went and got Todd. And I said, Todd, <clears throat> can I serve you, Todd? But this represents washing the feet of Jesus. He wasn't going to do it, and right away he changed his mind. First time he ever did it with somebody else and his wife. And he was so happy. He's the, the thought that he's washing the feet of Jesus, and I was washing the feet of Jesus, he turned his whole mind to man. Just, he was in bliss. And now he wants to get closer to the Lord. Isn't that amazing? A simple thing takes the pride out of us. That's Ken Crush's little... Uh, few words you said and touched my heart. Now, 2 Thessalonians, are you there? 2 Thessalonians 2, and I think it's, here it is, verse 9, 9 and so forth. That's 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, it says, Even him who is coming is after working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, deceit, deception, lying wonders. What is a lie? A lie doesn't exist. It won't exist. Only truth will exist. This is what the Lord tried to tell us. Only truth will exist. If we're living a lie, we only have a temporary existence with pain, suffering, and misery, and lots of garbage in between. It's not worth living. Only Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life it says, even after the coming, after the working of Satan with lying wonders and with all deceivableness, all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, be undeceived. Because why? Why does that happen? Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Because they receive not the love of the truth. And for this cause, God shall send them. What will he send them? 
You know that text. For God will send them strong delusion. What is a delusion? A delusion is believing a lie. Strong delusion that they believed a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in what? but had pleasure in unrighteousness, had pleasure in sin in this temporary world. We can sacrifice eternal life for a little thing, can't we? For a shrimp. Most of all, for self-worship. It's very important for us to understand what God is doing. I just want to share the story I shared, the story I shared with the first service. Patty, Patty told me that you heard that last week. Is that true? So I'll, I'll give you another one. <laughs> Some of you got these, these letters from uh, Dwayne McKee. But anyway, if you heard it over again, Ellen White says, repeat, 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 repeat. So we'll repeat, repeat, we'll repeat again. <laughs> another year, I'm just going to share some of this from Dwayne McKee. He's quoting, another year began, and we can't wait to see what God will do. There are radio stations planned, more God pods to distribute, and some amazing opportunities for the preaching of the gospel. Just this past Sabbath, he told his wife, Kathy, that he received 40 a baptism in Bangladesh. 40 people were baptized in Bangladesh in a Hindu village. And across Mindoro, there are 21 evangelistic meetings being held by former Rebels, can you believe that? By former rebels, they're the evangelists now. Like me, I was a former rebel. Like me, <laughs> how about you? Were you a former rebel? Praise the Lord. All across Minduro, 21 evangelistic meetings are being held by former rebels. We also learned several military officers were baptized. That's the reason why we do what we do. That's the reason our business on this earth is not to glorify ourselves, not to make ourselves with temporary riches, cherish mammon, but we have become, if we know Christ, if we have a personal relationship with Him, what will our treasure be? What? What will our treasure be? What is it? If we have Jesus, what's his treasure? What's his treasure? When we have Jesus in us, our treasure becomes people. People. That's what we do. I was uh, witnessing to my neighbors. I have five, six neighbors. And, uh, well, let me tell you what happened before. How much time do I have, Rodney? I need three hours. I was going to do an AWR meeting in Greenville, Tennessee, and I went to this little restaurant. It's amazing. This little restaurant has grits and eggs for like $3.99 and uh, another dollar for toast. I said, wow, you're going to eat here. It's $20, $25. <laughs> and I was telling this young lady, the cashier, I said, uh, I'm with AWR Radio. We got these uh, little... Uh, gifts for you that God's going all over this world broadcasting good news no bad news just good news and most of them are Christians there you know most of them she says oh that's fine leave them here and uh, I'll pass them out I'll read one tonight I said great great she said and uh, she said why don't you make a flyer I said I'm going to be having an AWR meeting at the Greenville Seventh-day Adventist Church they know the Greenville Seventh-day Adventist Church there because there used to be a hospital there we used to have a hospital, so they have very good uh, thoughts of the Seventh-day Adventist church there because of the hospital. But now it's gone. But they still remember. So she said, why don't you make a, a, a poster, a flyer, and put it on the wall and invite people. I said, I want you to come to the meeting to hear me, hear me speak and share some video about AWR Radio. She said, oh, why don't you make it? And I said, I, I, thought, I went out of there and I thought, wow, it's a good idea. So I went to Pastor Nate. He's the young pastor there. He's the associate pastor. We didn't have the, the regular pastor yet. And I said, Nate, what do you think about 
making this evangelistic. He said, do it. Do it. Whatever it costs, I'll pay for it. And I said, well, you don't have to pay for it. We'll pay for it. Or AWR Radio will pay for it, whatever. He said, whatever. We'll get it done. So I made some posters, put them around town, and then I made an announcement to the church. I said, listen, I used to be a drunk. Can you, every one of you, invite some drunks? I want them to hear. I want them to hear my testimony. I want them to hear what God's doing all around the world. Invite some drunks. And I said, by the way, invite some sinners. Invite some sinners. I want the sinners to hear this. Because the Lord says that the sinners and their drunks, the harlots and their drunks will go to heaven before you will, who are religious and don't obey the Lord. Amen. So I, I remember that, that thought. So I invited two drunks. I want you to keep them in prayer. They came. The drunks came. Ron and Bruce. Can you remember those names, Ron and Bruce? Keep them in your prayer to my neighbors. One of them makes moonshine. <laughs> my other neighbor, her name is Stella. She's raising five grandchildren, going out of her mind. Tried to have Bible studies with her. But grandchildren are here, grandchildren are there. So just keep her in prayers. She came to church. So I invited the people to come and hear AWR. They're not, they're not Seventh-day Adventists. Five more hours. Okay. We, uh, I invited them. Six people came and one child. And they heard our message. That was a great victory. That was a great victory. Okay, so there's deceptions all over this world. We are to undeceive the world. We are to live the life of Christ. Is that what you want to do? Is that why you're here? You're in the best place. You're in the best place to worship the Lord. The Lord has a future for us. This is, this is not our home. It's a temporary existence place. Temporary. We need to work hard that our king would come and we'll start living. Start living throughout eternity. What is no pain, no suffering, no death, no misery, no crying. No more hospitals, no more jails. No more prejudice, no more sickness. Can you praise God? Amen. You know, I'm going to uh, close with this uh, story. There was this man. It was in one of Mark Finley's stories. That was in the book uh, 2000 and Beyond. You remember that book? He talked about Kim and Steve. You know the story about Kim and Steve? Any of you read that story? Well, anyway, Steve won the lottery. Twice, Ohio, state lottery, millions of dollars. They were so happy. It says that they were euphoric. Euphoric is they were more than happy. They could have all the pleasures of the world because they got it. They made it. They made it in this world. But then Kim was not so euphoric after a while because she wanted uh, Steve's money, but Kim was deceitful. She had an extramarital affair. But Steve loved her. He loved her. She was talking. She decided, what am I going to do with all this money? I have to get rid of Steve. So she decided to put a contract on Steve, the one who loved her. Her 21-year-old son heard the conversation talking to her lover. He told his dad she had a great motive. They had the money. The police knew they won the money. She had a great motive to kill him. So they arrested her. She stayed in jail. What do you think Steve was doing? Grieving, grieving, grieving. He said, I love her, I love her, no matter what. She, I love her. He, go, he started visiting her, visiting her in jail. All their friends said that they're crazy. He said, yes, that's what love is. It's crazy. Kept visiting her, visiting her, visiting her until she realized that the love affair she had was garbage. And the man that really loved her was willing to take her back even though she sinned and wanted to kill him. Are we that way? That we, every time we sin, we, we kill the Lord afresh, we stab him afresh, and the Lord is still willing to visit us. 
the Lord is still willing to come and see us and to save us and to take us back into the marriage. Isn't that amazing? There's more to that story, but I can't finish it. Now, maybe another time. Read the little book, Beyond, 2000 and Beyond. Well, anyway, he ended up, she, some time went by, but she, she got re back, back with her husband some way. He had enough money. The money, millions of dollars, was not important to Steve. His wife could not be replaced. The Lord calls us his bride. Doesn't he call us his bride? He done everything for his bride, and his bride wanted to kill him, nail him to the cross, and he still wanted to save us. What kind of love is this? No one will know until you experience Christ. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope and pray that this service has uplifted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and that you personally have been drawn closer to Him. If you have any questions or comments, please text us at 909-492-0738 or email us at office at mentonechurch.org. We look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.